Hi, thank you for joining our presentation, a hydraulic bimodal ankle to improve mobility and stability for prosthesis users. My name is Dr. Matthew Warnke, and I'll be joined by my co-presenter, Dr. Sarah Kohler McNicholas. I'm an employee of Willowood, and Sarah is an employee of the Minneapolis VA Healthcare System. We'd like to take this moment to thank our uh, funding source for this uh, grant from NIDLER, which is a Department of Health and Human Services Administration for Community Living. When we look at balance confidence among individuals that use a lower limb prosthesis, we know that the balance confidence is pretty low. And what this leads to is a reduction in social activities and reduced mobility. And even mo more concerning is that 52% of individuals with lower limb amputations fall over uh, very frequently, and these falls can lead to injury. When we look at the human ankle, we see that there's kind of three distinct uh, radius, one for walking, one for swaying, and one for standing. However, when we look at prosthetic feet, we can see if we look at the comparison to the purple line, most feet are designed for mobility and therefore don't lack, lack comparisons to the red, which is stability. So there is no system that can do both. A bimodal ankle system was previously developed to have both a unlocked position, a unlocked mode for mobility and a locked mode for stability. And this was accomplished by a sliding uh, mechanism that was controlled by a linear actuator. During clinical testing, what was found is during uh, when visual feedback was blocked, there was objective improvements in stability with the bimodal ankle compared to non-bimodal ankles. And subjective feedback, users felt that they were either equally balanced or more balanced when the ankle was locked. However, during this testing, we uncovered a new customer requirement, and that would be that the, it'd be nice for the ankle to be able to lock on uneven terrain. So the study objective here was to design a second generation prototype capable of continuous locking uh, on uneven surfaces. To get a little bit more specific, we had three main design specifications. One, that we had pretty much a, a, a uh, low torque during walking to unimpede motion. A total range of motion of roughly 24 degrees and then strength to be able to fully lock and not creep uh, for an extended period of time in the locked position. Other drivers, uh, uh, sorry, excuse me. Uh, to accomplish this, we selected a hydraulic ankle technology because we felt it accomplished four main things. One, it was resistant to dirt and debris, which could have uh, been a problem for the sliding mechanism. It was able to lock at any angle. It, we could provide this in an updated look, and it offered a robust design. We did preliminary testing in phase one of our grant uh, on a benchtop version of the cylinder. And this allowed us to test the ceiling mechanisms and some of the dimensions that, and uh, prove that we achieved our requirements for walking and for standing. In our final hydraulic cylinder design, we were able to take those dimensions and ceiling uh, strategies that we did in phase one and package that into a more sleek design that you see here. We did quad rings to help accomplish the um, low friction needed during walking. Uh, we did end caps, which allowed uh, less stringent requirements for a machining process and allowed us to, again, maintain our requirements during walking. One thing we thought was pretty neat was the inclusion of the flow path within the cylinder piston itself. This eliminated the need for external flow paths and allowed us to shrink and minimize our design. We incorporated the piston into, um, I'm sorry, the valving mechanism into the anterior end of the piston, which did not experience the same forces the posterior end uh, experienced. We also then uh, were able to lock and unlock the ankle using a screw mechanism to change the position of that valve stem. 
When we look at the final bimodal ankle design, there's a few key elements. We have bumpers that control both the plantar flexion and dorsiflexion. We have a rigid sidewall that overlaps a flexible keel. And Sarah will get into the overlap of those two and why it's important. And then finally, our hydraulic cylinder fits nicely um, into the, the foot frame. So I'll be talking about the human subjects testing of the bumper sidewalls and foot plates that we conducted with this design after it was optimized. And what we were trying to determine was the extent to which the bimodal ankle provided a biomimetic rocker shape for walking and standing. So we first optimized the bumpers through a trial and error process. And this was also based on the user's weight and activity level. We wanted to incorporate bumpers that were comfortable and provided a natural rollover shape for walking. We also selected a flexible um, foot keel. And what we were wondering is whether the shape and the overlap of the rigid sidewalls were able to provide a flat, effective rocker shape when the ankle was locked during the standing mode, but the overlap wasn't so large <clears throat> that it interfered with the rollover shape when the ankle was unlocked during walking. In order to test this, we collected data in a motion analysis laboratory with one lower limb prosthesis user using an eight camera motion capture system and one AMTI force plate. We used a modified Helen Hayes marker set with markers placed on the side wall to define a rigid foot segment. And we uh, measured the rollover shape of the ankle when it was both locked and unlocked. Um, when it was unlocked, we asked the subject to walk at his normal walking speed, and with the ankle locked, we measured standing for eight seconds and swaying for 30 seconds. The rollover shapes that we measured during walking, swaying, and standing are shown on the left. You can see that during swaying, which is shown in red, that the locked ankle provided a much flatter rocker shape than the unlocked ankle during walking, which is shown in blue. In order to characterize the difference in these rollover shapes, we measured the rollover shape radius. You'll see in this graph the rollover shape radius of the anatomical ankle foot system shown in blue during walking and swaying. And these have been normalized to the percentage of leg length so that we could compare it to the bimodal ankle um, condition shown in orange. What you'll see is that the rollover shape radius during walking was very comparable to the anatomical ankle foot mechanism, slightly larger, um, and that the rollover shape radius during swaying was much larger and therefore more stable than that of the anatomical ankle foot mechanism. We also measured ankle range of motion during walking. This is showing you the ankle angle range of motion during a gait cycle. And what we found was that during stance phase, the ankle range of motion was approximately 18 degrees and within the total 24 degrees um, offered by the design. So what you've seen here today is that we were designing an ankle that had both a um, function for walking and for standing. And those two functional modes were achieved by an ankle that could, could lock and unlock. When it was locked, um, it provided a flat effective rocker shape for standing and swaying. And when it was unlocked, it provided a curved effective rocker shape for walking. Our design incorporated a hydraulic cylinder, and this allowed for a continuous range of angles to allow for standing on non-level surfaces, which responded to the customer requirement um, that we learned about during our first phase of testing. We also found that through an iterative design process, the hydraulic cylinder met the design specifications and has been cycle tested to 2 million cycles, which is encouraging and lets us know that it's ready for extended testing with users. Our human subjects testing confirmed that when the ankle was locked, the amount of overlap between the rigid sidewalls and the flexible keel provided an extremely flat base of support, and that when it was unlocked, the rollover shape radius was only slightly larger than the target observed for the anatomical foot. We think that this is because during testing, we did not test the foot with a um, cosmesis or with a shoe. Um, and that by incorporating these flexible components in future testing, that the rollover shape radius during walking will be more similar to the anatomical ankle. We also um, would like to spend more time optimizing our selection of bumpers. We think that the anterior bumper may have been too stiff for the user during testing, which was um, reflected in subjective feedback that he provided. So in future work, we would like to develop a theoretical model to guide bumper selection 
We're um, in the current grant expanding our testing with lower limb prosthesis users to explore the extent to which the ankle improves standing and balance on both level and non-level surfaces. And finally, we've developed and will be soon testing an automatic switching algorithm that's designed to appropriately detect and switch between modes during realistic use scenarios. Thank you so much for listening to our presentation. Here are our list of references if you're interested. And if you have any questions, please feel free to email Matthew or, or me at these email addresses. Thank you so much. Thank you.